the topic of the day is going to use how to use the Quick Sketch program. Okay, so this will be in the brand new 5.0, and I do want to stress to you that for those users that are using the 4.0, and you do the sketch, all the same tools are uh, applied to the new 5.0. They're just uh, in a different position. That's basically it. So I'm in a claim right now. I'm going to come up into here to SimSol Software's training diagram. I have it in. Now I'm in the claim. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new sketch, okay, using the old tools that was in the 4.0. So that way you're familiar on how to do it already, but you just need to know where the location is. So I'm going to open up a new diagram. So if I can come right up here to our main ribbon and you'll see diagram new. So I'm going to left click on new. It's going to create a blank canvas. As soon as it brings it up, here we go. I'm going to do full screen so you can see it a little bit easier. Now the first thing that I do is I name the diagram. Just like you did in the 4.0, we're going to name our diagram. So I named the diagram, and as you can see, these tools are a little bit different, okay? We have our lines, we have our, what we call tools that are uh, line tools, along with walls and area components, okay? Now, these same tools have been actually uh, in the 4.0, and there's some other tools that have been added. So we have added a single line, a polyline. We can now do arcs, which was not in the 4.0. And we also can do a beezer. We're going to be showing an example of these tools. The other is called shapes. Now in the uh, 4.0 system, we had a rectangle and we had a circle. So it's all the tools are located on the left-hand side. We have added a triangle plus a uh, half triangle. They call it a right, and then we can then uh, change the orientation to that very easily to make a left triangle. The next tools that we see are going to be a text tool. So if you ever need to put a text box in, you can add it, left click on it, and there's our text box. We also have a polygon that we can run. The dimensioning line tool is the same as you saw uh, in the 4.0. So as you click on the line, it'll give you the dimension across the canvas. The other is the text label line entry tool. That means that when you draw a line, you can put some text to it. Okay. Now what SimSol has added now is thicknesses of walls. So we have an interior wall and we have an exterior wall. Then we also apply the, the dimension that's associated to the interior and the exterior wall. You're going to see how I'm going to be using that in just a second. The next one is going to be called area components. Area components, that I can get a, I can draw a box, left click and drag it, and it will put in, for example, my dimension of that rectangle. But there's another thing that we can also do, take our mouse, left click and assign it to an area. So in this case, I can click on bedroom one. Try this again, I'm sorry, bedroom one. It has my um, diagrams. Basically what I could do here is when I select here, I can go to bedroom number one and then places it on there. Uh, now also with this, I can also put in, for example, exact measurements. So I can put 11 foot 6 inches by hitting the tab key and addressing the length and then hit the apply button. So as I do that, I'm going, I should be able to get my dimensions, 11, 6 by 10. There we go. Here, here's our bedroom number one, 11, 6 by 10. So that's how we do our rectangles. We also have added an offset that I can place an offset on here. So for example, I can then come up here and then draw my offset. It will put in a missing area. So as you can see, there's an offset for that closet. Another thing that we can do is also put in wing walls. 
So that's a pretty neat component. We have openings along with doors. So I can also have doors in here. And then I can just move the door down. And then I have windows. So basically, those are the, the specific line tools, and we're going to be using that. Uh, also, what's been new added to the SimSol uh, Quick uh, Sketch is that I can undo my selections up to 26 times. Watch. Just by hitting the undo key, I can also bring it back. And also undo. So that is a very nice feature within the SimSol system. What you're seeing up here on the top are these three ribbons. These ribbons house all these little icons. A lot of them might be grayed out because the tool that you have selected, it doesn't apply to that icon or to that function. So that's why it's grayed out. But these are your edit tools for an object. Let me explain what an object is. An object is anything that's on the canvas. It's a line, it's a rectangle, it's a beezer, uh, it's a door opening. Those are all considered objects, okay? So as you select an object with left clicking on that object, it will automatically will highlight the, tool, the edit tools that are associated to that line or object. So you'll see that in just a second, okay? All right, we have two import buttons that have been added. Um, one, the first one is going to be that import areas of, of from the scope of damage. That's the brand new one. I'm going to show you that a little bit later. But the next one is what everybody you have been using currently in the SimSol system. It's called Quick Sketch. So that has not changed. So I'm going to put in an area using Quick Sketch. Take my mouse, left click on it. It is now activated. How do I know? I can come over here to Quick Sketch On. And when I do that, it automatically turns it on. It's ready for input. Take my mouse right on the canvas where I'd like the first line to start. Left click to anchor it. And now put in the dimensions by using my keyboard, not the mouse, but the keyboard. And then I'm going to use the area of direction with the up, down, left arrow, or right arrow on your keyboard. So let's try to do something on here. So we're going to say 60 feet to the right. So as you can see, I've got 60 feet to the right. If I made a mistake, I can hit the undo button and let's say 60 foot 6. So this is how I'm going to put it in. 6, 0, space bar on my keyboard, the numeral 6 and then the arrow of travel, which will be the right arrow. So as you can see, I have 60 foot 6. I'm now going to come down 30. So I use 3, 0, down arrow. I'm now going to come out 20, or I'm going to come in, excuse me, 20 to the left. And 30 down. So as you can see, that has not changed within the 4.0 to the 5.0. You're going to get a thicker line for an exterior perimeter wall, okay? And we can change that. So I've got 30 here. So now I'm going to put in 30 foot space 6. Hit the left arrow. If I made a mistake, I can come back, undo it and put 40 space 6. So as you can see, very easy uh, to, to correct yourself when you're doing your perimeter walls. Now, to close up the quick sketch, it's exactly the same way as you did in the 4.0. We're going to left click on the A key on your keyboard, the A key on your keyboard. And with that is going to automatically close up your perimeter, okay? So Quick Sketch has now been disengaged. As you can see, there's no Quick Sketch active that you saw when we first started, okay? So now that I've got my perimeter in here, I can then do my roofing diagram real easy. If 
by coming up and selecting a line. I can use either a dimensional line, a label text line, or just a standard line. Okay, so what I usually do is I use a standard line here and I'm trying to find half of it. I already know it's at 30 feet, so I'm going to come to the inside of the wall and drag to 15. See how I'm not doing that very well? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my undo key. There is a special new key that we have added to the Quick Sketch program, and that is right here down to where it says horizontal vertical snap from 0 090 uh, to 180. Okay, so what this does is it makes me or forces the computer to draw straight lines. So now that I have that selected, I can then take my line, draw it down, and if you take a look down at the bottom, the same way as we did in the 4.0, you're going to see 15 feet. So when I snap it, it says right here, 15 feet, and I know it's there, and it's correct. I'm only using this to find the center, which is right here, and that's why I can draw my line so I can get to the tip of the triangle that we're going to be drawing uh, for um, this building. So what I'm going to do here is take my line here, and I have to reselect the line. How about if I just took a dimension line, which is here, put it at the right in the middle of that wall, and then drag. So if I want to drag that all the way up to 35 feet, now see how I can't, it's hard to get 35 feet. Well, there we got 35 here, but I'm just going to go 34.8. So let's say that I've got 34.8 here. I can actually uh, modify that line very easy by taking my white pointer tool, left clicking on the line. Now the object has focus, and I can select 35 foot even. Remember, use your tab key. It's at a 180 degree. I'm going to click on apply. And now I have 35 feet. Okay. Now from that, I can then draw my intersect line. Or uh, if I wanted to make a little triangle here line, I can bring that line back in. So I'm going to take my white pointer tool and drag it down. Let's say that it was at 15 feet. Let's say I have a 14.8. I can come down, type in 15, zero, apply, and it resizes for me. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to delete a line. This line right here where I was trying to find my center. Take my pointer tool, left click, and select delete. Now all I need to do is put in my other lines here for the valleys. Have focus on the object. Ah, you see what our problem is? I can only draw vertical lines. I need to turn this off. Okay, so now that I have that marked out, I can now draw my ridge. I'll take that out to 24-7. And if you're not good at drawing a straight line, what you can do is turn that back on again. If I make a mistake, I reselect it. Now, 
you have to you have to um, actually reselect the object every time, or you can use what's known as we call insert mode. Insert mode. Let me show you that. Insert mode. Take your mouse, left click on insert mode, pick the tool. Now that tool is in memory. As you can see, I did not have to go and reselect the tool. Okay, so that's how we uh, can do a roof diagram very, very easy. There's a couple other things that we can do. Okay, I can come up and select a circle to represent damage. Now, see how I'm missing my my um, dimensions, I can take this circle and I can color it first and then send it to the back. So watch what I'm going to do here. I have to have focus on the object. So I'm going to take my white pointer tool, left click on it. There we go. Then come back. I can put a pattern on it if I need to. And then bring it to the, send it back so I can then have my dimensions showing through them. Or I could use what's known as transparency. See, as you can see here, I put it very light so it brings out my 24 7 and my dimension lines off that. So I can put different um, transparency on it. So if I need to make it a little bit more, so you can see it looks very nice that way. And if I need to put text on it, there we go. And I'm going to put in my text. Now I want to make my text a little bit larger so I can come up here where it says eight, set that to maybe 16, hit the F2 key and type in damaged by hail. If I need to center that, take my mouse and left click align to center. And then I can then take my object or my text object and move it to wherever I need to do it. So for example, I can select this and move this and move it wherever I need to move it to. So I have damage by hail. OK, so basically what the important thing is, is to gain uh, focus on the object by simply taking your mouse. Use the white pointer tool. Left click. On the box. And then you can move it to wherever you need to move it to. OK, so that's basically the same tools that we were using in the uh, 4.0 system, okay? So what I did is I made a quick sketch. I then added uh, lines to it, uh, dimension lines or ridge lines, okay? Made my triangles, okay? And then added a circle, colored it, and then put a text identifying uh, what that color uh, object is. There are some special edit tools that you see right here, moving the dims label down, or I can move it up. So if I need to re, uh, reposition uh, that dimension line, I can do so. See how I did that, guys? I marked the line. And when I mark the line, I can then move it to either side. Okay. That's what I was saying about the the uh, edit tools that are up here on the three little ribbons that you see. Okay. So as an object is marked, then I can actually then take advantage of those edit tools that are above on those three ribbon bars. Okay. 
All right, so that's, you saw how fast I could do the quick sketch, okay? We also have, for example, interior walls and exterior walls, okay? So I'm gonna show you that next, okay? So I'm gonna start a new diagram. And when you wanna start a new diagram, all you have to do, or you wanna to go to another part of the SimSol system, you're gonna click on done. So when you click on done, it posts to the canvas, okay? When we print it out, it looks uh, very clean and clear. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Show you how to take this plot one and print it to, to the preview. And that looks like a really neat diagram there. Okay. Now, if we need to edit this diagram, what you need to do, highlight uh, the diagram over there on the claims enclosure tree. It places the image on your canvas and we need to edit the canvas by hitting edit diagram. And now we can make our edits. Okay, I'm gonna make a new diagram up by selecting diagram, full scale. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use our quick, uh, use our exterior walls instead of the quick sketch. So right here, I've got exterior walls. Now, if I don't wanna keep on hitting that exterior wall icon, I'm gonna turn it on. So now the insert mode is on. So to remember my last click, which is gonna be exterior walls. So watch what I can do here. Now I'm going to turn on my 90 degree angle, which is pretty neat because now I can draw my lines very, very easy. So I've got 80, 40, 30. See how fast I can do this by using our exterior walls, turning on our horizontal. So if I need to move that off, I can very easy edit this by selecting the line. Now I've got the insert mode on. If I click on here, it's gonna draw another line. So I'm gonna turn that off. Take my white pointer tool, select the line, place it on the line and left click. And then what I can do here is select this line here and drag it over. So I can move, resize, edit the line by having focus by just taking my mouse, going to the pointer tool guarantees me that it will uh, actually pick the line, select it, and I can then move it, resize it, and then I can delete it by just hitting the delete key. I can fine tune my lines by having focus and then actually putting in 70 feet or 68.8 uh, or whatever, whatever the size of the perimeter wall is. One popular tool is going to be this free area tool, okay? So I've got my perimeter drawn, left click on the free area tool, and I'm going to then place it where it's supposed to be within the drawing. Take a look at the bottom of my dimensions, it says 28 by 21. So let's just say that it was 20 by 20. So I can then come down here and select master bedroom. So when I do that, it's selected in here. If these dimensions are correct, all I have to do is click apply. Okay. If I need to make them larger, 
I can then resize them. Now, did you see how I did that? I'm going to do it again. Here, I have to have focus on the object. Once I have focus on the object, I can move, edit, resize, and, and delete. Move, resize, edit, and delete. So I'm going to come up here and then reselect the font. And when I do that, it automatically resizes my font for me. So now I can pick an, an, another object if I need to. So for example, if I need to put another area in, And let's say that it's a 13 by 11. And I'm going to say master bathroom, click apply. So now I have my master bathroom. I want to show you a trick too, guys. I'm going to put another area in. And let's see, it was 11 by 13, if I recall, right? So let's say that this is going to be 13. So it's 9 by 13. Now, what we have in our program are called snap points. Snap points. I don't have to drag this and actually try to position it in. I can snap it into place. So I can take my mouse. And you see this hand. Does everybody see the hand? Yep. Yes or no? Everybody see the hand? Yes. 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 Yep. Okay, that is the activation of the quick snap. I do not have a hand here. Is that correct? Yeah. So when you do that, Jim, you just place your mouse right there on the hand. Left click, and I'm going to put it right on. Now, see, I can't do this because guess what? I've got my yeah, my horizontal vertical snap, and I'm going to undo that. Now, place it, and I've got the hand, and watch what I'm going to do, and I'm placing it right on the X, so you're going to do a hand-to-hand, -hand, and it automatically snaps right into place. Try it again. Cool. Okay, now I can position this by left-clicking and dragging it, but it's just easier to snap it. So this is the new feature within the new 5.0. Before, you could just take an area, like a box, put text on it. Here, we've got the text already in. We've got the dimensions already in. And now, I can just use Quick, uh, quick Snap and pop that in right like that. We can also put in the doors and windows in. So for example, I'm coming to the area components, and I'm going to select Door. Left click, place my mouse, right on the line, and left click on that. Do you see the door opening here? Everybody see the door opening? Yeah. See, we have a problem here, don't we? Got to rotate it. I have to rotate it. So, Bob, what we're going to do is take, I always take my pointer tool, left click on it, and I can use the orientation uh, bullet is what I call it. And then that way, I can then stretch it, make it larger, make it smaller. So as you can see here, I've got a five foot door, but let's say it's three. I could resize it or just type three in and click apply. Can you slide it up? There you go. Yep, I can slide it up and down uh, on the axis of that wall. So I still need to put in some more doors. So I'm going to come over here and put a door here. Put a door here. Oops. Now see what's happening here? What, what's happening? Anybody see? I did not repick the door unless I could do it in insert mode and pick all my doors all at one time, which I'll show you in a second. But I still have to have focus on the door because I'm not in the insert mode. I have to repick that same one every time. Okay. Now, if I want to put windows in, check this out, guys. I'm going to turn on the insert mode. I'm going to take my window and I'm going to, I've got the insert mode on. As long as I have the insert mode on.
And if I need to reposition those windows, remember the, the white arrow. Let me show you a trick. If the insert mode was off and I click on the object, I have no problem gaining a uh, focus on the object. Okay? But if the insert mode was on, I would lose that. And the only way I could actually pick it would be the pointer tool. Every time I have to reselect it. Okay? The insert mode, remember, picks your last object that's selected within memory. Okay? So let me show you a trick here, too. If I need to create a vertical window, I got object on the line and I'm selecting it. And see how that always goes um, horizontal. I need to make it vertical. Let me show you a trick. Take Remember what I said is we have to use our pointer tool. And then I could use this tool, but, but guess what? I have a rotate 90 left and rotate 90 right. So when I click on that, it automatically rotated it for me. But the thing is, is every time I hit the window, it's going to make me do that same operation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to use the option called copy. So the object has to be highlighted. Click on copy, and now it's in memory. All I have to do is do paste and just paste it to where I want. See how I'm doing this? OK. If I need to put in a garage door right here, or a garage door, let's say this is our detached garage, take our door. And now, can anybody tell me how I can make that 16 foot? I can, uh, but if I'm in insert mode, I can't really pick it right now because it would give me another door opening. So I need to use my white pointer tool. And now Just plug it in down there. I can plug it down in there. That's one way. Or I could drag it, whichever you want. And if I need to t do a text box, remember? I need now I want you to pay attention to this one because this is the only way you can put text is going to be in the non insert mode. So I got to turn the insert insert mode off because my text tool will not work. So if you ever have a problem and you can't put text in, that means that your insert mode is on. Okay, so I'm going to come up here to my text tool. Draw my text. <clears throat> Say I want 16 feet. Now, can anybody tell me how to hit the edit button to continue my text? F2. 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 Excellent. Then I can come up here and say garage. Now, if I want to center that, there we go. So I can pop that in, move this up, and then left click and drag to the center if I need to. I can put in my doors. Now, do you see what I just did? Since my insert mode was off, did you see what I did here? Watch. If I need to move this, resize it, or edit, as long as my insert mode is off, it will gain object. It will gain focus on the object. Okay, and then I can just take one side and then bring that up to, let's say, if it's double doors at six foot. And place that in like that. Okay, so there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, let me show you an interior wall. So if I have an interior wall and I'm overdrawing it and I'm putting my insert mode on,
Danny, how do you get the uh, draw on the interior walls about the dimensions? If you want to put dimensions in, it's going to be right I here on the interior wall. Yeah, oh, if you I do not, I'm to. sorry. Yeah. No dimensions. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, I didn't put any dimensions here. I can now put in... My kitchen, let's see here, that's gonna be a big kitchen. Let's see right here, 17. Okay, now you can see how I've got that. And I've got my insert mode on, so I'm gonna take that off, resize. Okay. And what I could do here is label this kitchen. Now, watch what I'm going to do here. See, you now I have that door opening there. If I send this to the back, I now have my kitchen drawn with my door opening. Let me also show you this. I can make an art. Selecting it. If I needed to make a bow window or bay window, I could do that. If I make a mistake, I can always use my undo key. I want to show you some special functionality. Can everybody see my, my screen on here called Scale to Fit? So when I click on Scale to Fit, it automatically will scale my whole diagram to fit the screen. That's really neat if you've got very long dimensions that you have to put in if it's off the canvas. Um, if you need to put a grid on, you can do so by activating the grid, okay? There's one more thing I'd like to show you guys, and this is the brand new import feature. And let me just explain how this works. I'm going to go to the scope of damage. And you're going to see my master bedroom through the great room. So when I click on that and I click dims, you're going to see the area drawn in already because this enabled area smart sketch and printing has been activated. Okay. So as you can see, I have my master bedroom by 19, six by eight. I have my offset. Now, when I click my offset, check it out. My offset is located on the right side, so it places my offset on the right side. And I displace that by or moving it down the picked right wall on its axis by 15 foot six. Let me just show you this little trick here. I'm going to put zero, so it should put it right out there at the top of, see how the offset has moved all the way to the top right? And what I'm using here is distance from the top left, putting in 15 space six and moving it down. So did you see how I did that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now this has been in SimSol since 3.0, but nobody ever used it. Well, the reason why we put it in is so you can see what's gonna happen next. But we wanna make sure that our windows are set correctly, our openings are set correctly, and our dimensions are set correctly. So if you put your dimensions in and you size this up, when I click on done and go to the next one, it's also sized in correctly. 
So what we're doing is we're creating these little shapes. So these shapes are now going to be posted to the canvas. Watch how fast I can create a uh, diagram. I'm clicking on the diagram and going full screen. Now, instead of going doing the quick sketch, there was another import feature called import areas, and it shows all the areas that are available. When I select that, I'm going to take the master bedroom to the great room. And I'm going to select all or just check that one box and click done. When I do that, it automatically places those shapes with the names and the dimensions on my canvas. So let's see how fast we can arrange or snap these into place. I'm going to hit skip. All of them but the roof then. Yeah, well, we didn't put the roof in because the roof is not associated to that area as of yet, but it will be. Okay. So I'm going to click on scale to fit, make it a little bit larger. And now what I'm going to do, remember what I used the snap, quick snap, remember the snap points? So I'm going to do hand to hand, X to X. Um, I'm going to show you this here. Bring that right there. There we go. I made a mistake. Take that. Okay. If I make a mistake, I use the undo key. Now, take a look here. We've got a couple problems. Anybody see the problems? How am I going to get in this? I have a door in there. I can see it faintly over there, but the right master. The front. There you go. I'm going to take my master bathroom, mark it, and then send it to either the back and see what happens. And that's what I needed to do. I have this one that's also a problem here. So this is my great room. I need to send that one to the back. You can't get into the kitchen or the dining room. So that needs to be there we go. And that's how we can do it. Now what there's a little trick here, guys, is that if you're out there only gonna write your estimate for the area rooms in question, either you can make all your areas up and snap them up as we did, or only create the areas that are damaged and then I can then I can finish up with my diagram by selecting my exterior walls now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on my 90 turn on my insert mode and I'm going to draw my exterior walls Okay, so you see how fast I drew the exterior walls, right? Mm -hmm. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to send all those walls to the back. So I'm going to hold my shift key. I have to mark them. There we go. Now what I'm doing here is I'm trying to attempt to uh, mark just the exterior lines using my my um, shift key and then using my send back. That highlights my windows for me. Okay. So when I hit send to back, so I still get my 
exterior lines. And I'm going to hit uh, scale to fit to bring it all in line. There we go. So as you can see, I still have my outer dimensions now, plus my windows and doors come up, and now I can finish it off. So right here, I can just use my interior wall. And then I can make my doors in here. Using my rotation tool. Now, see how I have that off a little bit? I could use my rotate left or rotate right and then place that and then put my text in. Center and position. Okay. How do we print it? It's real simple. You have to click done, go to your print diagram, select the diagram, and do a print preview. I'm going to print to the PDF. And it's creating my diagram now. There's my diagram.